guys, thank you for joining me. The topic of this video is very straightforward. It's just makeup I wish I hadn't forgotten about. And I'm turning it into a full face look today, but honestly, I could probably go ahead and do this video a few times over because there's just, there's so much. I had some time over the weekend to really dig into my collection, look through things, enjoy things, uh, remember things. And these were some of the top items where I was like, oh yeah, like kind of kicking myself for not having used them all more recently. It happens when you have a big collection, when you try a lot of products, it's not really surprising. But yeah, I love this stuff so much and I'm excited to talk about it today. That coffee is perfect temp right now, yes. So here's the first thing, and this is kind of a little foreshadowing for what's gonna happen foundation-wise as well today, but my Laura Geller Spackle Mattify Primer. Now you might think, Em, you're always going for like a lot of juicy hydrating stuff. You say you have normal to dry skin. Why the mattify? Well, this actually is still very moisturizing, but it does so well in terms of making your skin look like flawless, poreless, doll skin. It's like more so what it's capable of doing to the pores while being something that doesn't zap your skin of the moisture, okay? It feels, oh, smooth. Honestly, it's giving me a little extra hydration, even for being a mattifying primer. And I'll see the effect even more when I go to put my foundation on, but even right now, I can already tell what it's doing. This is such a good primer just really different for its function and then how it actually feels on the skin. If you're a person who does maybe have my skin type or any skin type really, you don't want anything to dry you out, but at the same time you'd like that smoothing effect on pores. This is really good. I love it so much. Um, okay, and then I'm using a powder foundation today. So I'm gonna go in with my concealer first. And this is a rediscovered concealer for me. I used to be all about this. I used this quite a bit. This Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. The one that's in like the pretty large sized bottle. Um, I have it in the shade Nude, and it says Conceal, Contour, Highlight, Retouch. And honestly, this is a really good concealer if you're going to go in and touch up in, later in the day and add a little more concealer. It's really good, but it's got great coverage too. So I'm going to put a little bit on here, and this is going to be my first step because, again, my foundation is not a liquid today. It is a powder. So I can get my added coverage here with my concealer. For the blending, I think I will just use this brush from e.l.f. And this side, think about spreading first. Okay, you're gonna take that dot that you did, and instead of just eating up all that product with your large brush, spread it around, let it cover some surface area, and then go in with your bigger brush and do some dabbing into the skin, okay? And the same thing around the nose, spreading it around. I could probably go a shade or two lighter in this concealer, honestly, for throughout the winter months, and I might. <laughs> I really like it, but I like so many concealers. There are a lot of great ones out there right now, high-end and drugstore. I'm just going to appreciate what I have here. This definitely still works for me. Um, it's just got a little bit more of a yellowy tone than a lot of the things I've purchased recently. Maybe that's showing up a little bit more because I'm putting it on bare skin, not skin that's covered in foundation right now. But the coverage is really, really beautiful. I feel like it's totally full coverage and mattifying, but not too heavy looking. And again, it can be good as a little touch-up concealer. That's one of the claims is retouching, and I think it's valid. <laughs> okay, we're just making sure we've got that concealer everywhere we want it before we go in with our powder foundation. Very good, very pleased with that. Now the powder foundation, if you are a longtime viewer, you recognize that this was really closely tied to this for me. This is my Double Take Baked Versatile Powder Foundation. And um, Laura Geller has two pretty popular powder foundations. One is the Balance and Brighten, probably the most popular, and it's, hi biscuits. She's in and out today. That one I think they call like a light to medium coverage. This one would be like a medium to full coverage. Um, it's very velvety on the skin and it pairs so well on top of this stuff, okay? Beautiful. The texture feels so smooth. So this is baked powder foundation. I wear it in the shade medium. And then another thing I was rediscovering as I was just playing around, um, my retractable kabuki brush, also from Laura Geller. Big old angled brush. It really covers the skin nicely. So I'm going to take 
take that and dab it all over the surface of my powder foundation, which is a really soft, nice powder. And so the whole surface of that brush has some. And I'm going to begin kind of dabbing it on the skin. I'm not doing a real like crazy swirl buff, especially over these areas where I've put my concealer, okay? I'm just kind of you know, swirling it down in here, but otherwise pressing it on. And you can see that beautiful coverage that you actually get there. I'll stick to about half the face at first. It's such a nice shade, a really pretty finish. It just, I would say it looks velvety on the skin. Super perfecting. And I did, the brush is so soft and nice. Again, get product all over it. Stamp over areas where you applied concealer. And then you can do a little buff over those places where you're just building up with this product alone. I should link below probably to the video where I did a very in-depth like look and review with this stuff, but it's good. Here's what you come away with, and it doesn't even look thick. To see myself in the mirror, it just looks even, super duper even, super smooth. Um, looking up close at my nose, areas where I might see pores normally, nothing. I credit the Spackle Mattify and definitely this as well. They're a great combo. Oh, also, I forgot to pull in. I was going to use this on the under eye area. My Cali Contour Palette from Smashbox. What a good palette. And if you like their traditional, like their three color contour thing that had the three circles of color, it was this, this, and that. That like perfect bronzer color, cool contour, and this light powder. And the light powder is really good on the under eye too. But if you're a fan of that, or you've ever wanted to have that, that's all in here, plus a couple highlighters and a really pretty blush. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that brightening powder. Look at how it shows. I wouldn't normally go on top like this, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just hitting that area with a little bit of this. I used this yesterday, I was like, wow, it really is brightening. Doesn't take a lot, does it? And then I'm gonna use some of my bronzer shade here. This is, I can't get over this. Now I saw, I think it might have been on QVC, a newer Cali Contour palette, but it was more like just blush and highlight. So honestly, slightly less versatile than this one, but it looked pretty. And the packaging was more pinky, I wanna say. Has anybody tried that? Should I try that? No, theme of the video is using and appreciating what you had the things you'd forgotten about. I would love to hear in the comments section about what things, as you sit here and think about it, maybe you go through your stash, what things do you wish you hadn't forgotten about? I'm still with the bronzer shade here. I mean, I love what they, that did around the hairline. These are pigmented powders, really nice. Um, I'm gonna work in a little bit of my cool contour. Okay, so a little bit of this right in here. Just kinda, kinda reserve that for the cheek bone area. I really like the blend of those two. It kind of forms an ideal contour shade for me. Do they have a deeper tone in this? I want to say they did make one. I could be thinking of something else. I hope not. Absolutely love that. The blush in here is great too. You get a great dusty rose, a couple of highlights also, but I rediscovered a couple of other blushes in my collection. Um, one of them is MAC Warm Soul. I was like, oh yeah, Warm Soul, that looks so good in any circumstance. It's kind of a surprising blush because you see it in the packaging and you think, will that do anything? But I remember, you know, once upon a time when I bought it, I bought it because it was being recommended by others. I heard a lot of people talk about it and it truly is beautiful. And you're sitting there thinking, what? Um, I probably need to put this one on today if you're not familiar with it. It does have some glow. It's a mineralized blush. Then I also rediscovered, and this was mainly from the prompting of someone I saw in a video on TikTok. They were talking about um, this Milani powder blush and coral coat. They were just giving like a whole face routine. And they pointed this one out and I was like, oh, I have that one. And I used it the other day. It was just so bright and pretty and life-giving to the face. So I love that. Um, and then again, I could also use the stuff in the Cali contour, but I think I'm gonna do this today. Because some people don't know what this is all about. Warm Soul from MAC. Pick some up. She's gentle, but oh, so perfect. Honestly, just a little bit toasty, a little bit rosy, but not in a pinky red 
way, okay? It's okay. If you like blush down on the apple of your cheek, don't let the world tell you you can't do that. Like, do it if you like it. For me, I feel like head on, that's what people can see. If we're coming at people at a pure profile all day long, then yeah, keep your blush on the side of your face. But I mean, hello? A little on the cheeks? Not bad. I love it. Like, mmm. Understated, but really pretty and definitely does have some pigment. Okay, love it. Um, I rediscovered a highlighter. Again, two good highlighters in this palette, but my Living Luminizer from RMS Beauty. My goodness, RMS has some good stuff. I was talking about Lip and Cheek over the weekend. I did a TikTok about some of my favorite Lip and Cheek products because I love kind of coordinating that these days. And I believe I have a couple good ones from RMS, but this is a highlighter called Living Luminizer. And it looks like straight up white pearl, okay? And this is really, really perfect for giving a brightening, but really realistic glow. So it, instead of just being a gel, what was the last product I used where it was kind of just like a gel highlighter? Oh, like the Patrick Ta uh, newest palette, the cream highlight in there was kind of just like a vaseline -y type of gel. This has an effect because there's shimmer in it, okay? It's a fine shimmer. It's pretty undetectable when it gets blended on the skin, but it's there and it provides this crazy beautiful brightness with minimal product applied and it's also a cream so it just really looks like there's nothing makeup -y going on but you got an effect from it isn't that what we kind of all want out of a highlight the effect without it looking like a lot was done surface of the skin has a gleam to it. If you go went and told somebody, I am wearing powder foundation today, because of this product, they might not believe you, you know? And because of the spray I'm gonna use in a minute too. I really do think setting sprays are ultra important when you've gone in all over your face with powder foundation, or maybe you've just gone hard with powder in general and used quite a bit. I feel like a setting spray really helps. And fun fact, sometimes when um, Bubba and I come up here during the day, like we'll have had lunch and uh, he comes up and he plays in what we sort of call the playroom where the girls sleep. Um, he's got a bunch of toys and stuff in there, but he'll come in the makeup room and just poke around a little bit. And I think he saw me putting on like a face mist late in the day and he'll come in and say, face mist, face mist. And he'll ask me to put on like four different face mists on him. He likes to just stand there and then he just gets giddy about it when it mists in his face. But um, Glossier Soothing Face Mist, the rose water spray. This I think might be the best cosmetic rose scent outside of like there's a great perfume from the Erin line Estee Lauder Erin there's an amazing rose perfume from that um but outside of anything that you'd wear as a perfume a rosy makeup product this stuff is the best the best rose scent it was one of the first products I ever used when Glossier was a brand new brand I think I had just had a baby. Was it Belle? Was it that far back? And they had sent me some stuff and this was in it and I couldn't make heads or tails out of their crazy skin tint that didn't do anything for my face. I really could not appreciate a lightweight coverage product in those days, but this I pretty much love from the start. I've repurchased it. It's such the perfect, fresh, accurate, not overdone rosy scent. And then look at what the surface of your skin looks like. Yep, it's a powder foundation day. Who would know? I'm loving this. Isn't this fun? The mascara I use in this video, by the way, was the catalyst for everything. It was the one that started the whole idea of the video. My brow product, you guys, the brow micro filling pen from Benefit. Remember when I couldn't shut up about this? This little three pronged brush. It's got like three little felt tips. Can you see it? They're cut angled. Come on now. The little felt tips are cut in an angle. And there have been quite a few brands try to do this same thing, but nothing does it like Benefit where the product paces itself out. And I haven't picked this up in a long time. Guess what? Still juicy. I can't believe how long this has lasted. And it paces the product out. You know how M gets annoyed by the brow products that just go whoosh, way too much, too quick, can't pace them because I've already got a thick brow and I don't need that much more. But this, I mean, do you see, do you see what we've done here to this brow? It's so nice. 
it really is one of those kind of worth the splurge items if you like a brow pin because I've tried L'Oreal's. I feel like there have been at least three other drugstore ones that I've tried and none of them hit the mark like this because it would have been great to share a dupe. You know how I like to share dupes. Would have been nice to find that in something, but whatever, I don't know what they figured out. Even if you had a brand new one, you it wouldn't overwhelm you, I promise. Like it's just a, whatever mechanism they've got going on there that makes the ink, I guess call it ink, makes the color come out in such a perfectly controlled fashion. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And look how you can really work it right here in the um, innermost part of your brows. Like what a dangerous place, you know, for a product like this. If you overdo it here, this is where I think you want the brow to look so much lighter and fluffier as opposed to the super concentrated look of like this part of your brow. You want this to be nice and light. You can work straight off of the tippy tip there and it looks perfect. I, I love it. I love that thing. And then I'm going to put my Brow Fast Sculpt on because this is the perfect tinted brow gel from the drugstore. All others can just sit back because Maybelline has figured it out. It's got the short bristles on one side, lays down product. Long bristles on the other side, combs through a more minimal amount of product. So you can get away with using this and this alone. Or, you know, you can pair it like I am right here, not trying to apply too much, but it's the best hold. It's the best hold you can get also. So brilliant design. The product itself is great. will actually fill in your brows and then it'll hold them in place all day. Had I forgotten about this? Not really. Um, this has always been on my radar. This has always been something I compare back to when I'm trying other things. I just hadn't used it a ton because I'd moved on to other products to try, kind of like with this one. Um, although I did kind of forget about that pen. Okay, I'm gonna put some uh, eye primer on. I'm gonna use Milani eyeshadow primer. We never forget about this. There could be a lot of possibilities for which eyeshadow thing I've forgotten about. Like there's loads of good things in my collection that I probably haven't used in a while, okay? But um, the Maybelline City Mini Palettes, I haven't reached for these in a long time, but these are actually really good, really good quality. Um, if you've used the Maybelline Palette, I still keep that in kind of like an easy access. The New York Nudes Palette, that's phenomenal, but these are like a, a more bite-sized amount of colors, and I have this one in Matte About Town. Basic Matte Eyeshadow Palette, Minimal Shades. This is so good if you like all matte. Colors are really, really smooth, great formulas. Um, I'm gonna go into this little, like, kind of light brown number right there on the end. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do a simple everyday look with this. And it's definitely, like, I, I think when I talk drugstore eyeshadow, I often bring up, uh, like, Wet n Wild's five and 10 color palettes, maybe e.l.f bite-sized palettes. Those seem to come up more for me. Maybe even my Believe Beauty ones, I talk about those more. But has it probably been years since I've discussed a Maybelline City Mini Palette on my channel? Yes. So we're getting back to it now. They are very accessible. I mean, Maybelline is a very accessible brand to a lot of people, and it's a good product. I'm going to go to this rosy brown right here. And there's other good, you know, color combos that they make that would have some shimmer in them. This just happens to be the all matte and I think it's a really good basic. Rosy brown. There is a little powdery kick up. I mean, they really softened up their formula for these. If you grab a Maybelline single, it's gonna be a different formula. Like even though they make some good singles for like one shadow looks and stuff. Um, this is a much softened up formula compared to that. So we've done our little rosy brown, really let it blend out. You've already put a light grease color there. So blending is really coming easy right now for that. We've got our darkest shade right here. I think I'm gonna go in with that next. What would I call that? It's almost like a burgundy brown. These are really nice color tones for a little palette like this. Okay, picking up some of that. And we're just going to dab that on the outer part of the lid. Look at the fullness of color. Outer lid. Pressing it on, letting it reach the crease. Okay. Then I come in with my small pointed brush, a little bit of the same color. You know what we like to do here, if we want to make a little bit more out of this, 
We can give ourselves that little bit of an eye lift. Velvety smooth. Look at that. Like, I mean, it's really easy work here. We're thinking about this open lid space now. We have kind of a little pinky, ever so slightly lilac shade. We've got a cream here. We've got a much lighter shade right here. I think I'm going to go for just a little bit of this. Opaque, full color. Who couldn't use this as everyday eyeshadow? I mean, really classic super put together. I'm going to go into a little bit of my white now. They give you a big swath of white. But I'm just going to hit my innermost corner just for added brightness right in there. You can always highlight with a matte white in here. A lot of people don't think to do it. They think only shimmer goes there, but the white really works. And then maybe I take some of this kind of bone color and we just highlight there. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, one thing I could have gone on to do with my darkest shade is just work a little bit of that under here with the small pointed brush. Again, same thing we used in our outer corner. Just go under the eye, maybe just the outer part a little bit. A lot of good liners out there. One I haven't thought about or used in a while is my M Cosmetics, um, the Illustrative Eyeliner Brush Tip in black. It really lays down the product beautifully. Has good staying power. It's a great product from the line. I just feel like I've been thinking more about their blushes and their lip colors lately. I haven't been thinking as much about the other products, but I'm just gonna put that on today. I thicken my line a little bit as I get to the outer edge of my lash line, but I'm not really winging it today. But line just gets slightly thicker. Now, mind you, I haven't probably picked this product up in months. It did a flawless, fully opaque black line over my powdery lids. So, yay. Good stuff. Then, the whole reason for this entire video was rediscovering L'Oreal Lash Paradise. This is the biggest kind of kicking myself product. This is so good. If you've got my kind of lashes where maybe you wish they were longer and thicker and would hold a curl, this mascara, like I loved it before, but I just kind of lost sight of it. And then I, for some reason, recently repurchased it and I'm feeling like I'm getting superhero type results out of it. What's going on? Don't get mystic black, get black as black. But I mean, I'm liking my result even better than Lash Princess from Essence. I don't know, gang. This is probably how many weeks old now have I been on this? Like two weeks? It's so perfect. It really makes me want to do, you know you're loving your mascara when it's making you want to do like liner free days, you know, barely their eye and just let your perfectly mascaraed lashes run the show. Like one little coat and things are looking fluffy and thick. I go in with two coats without much of a delay. It's not too goopy and wet, which definitely agrees with me. Just wiggle it in there. Really get it in there and then work it out to the tip. How did I let myself forget? I mean, I'm loving this stuff. The thickness, the bulk on the lashes. Okay, I think that's enough coats for now. I'm still gonna use a little Cali Ray Come Hell or High Water on the lower lashes, just cause that's what makes me feel safe and won't smudge. I forgot to mention it in the Sephora sale, but I did repurchase this. I just hadn't opened it up yet, but I purchased it in a little set that came with an eyeliner and I had it still in my box, not up with the things I was showing you, and um, I forgot to mention it. For the lips, I had a couple different things to talk about here. Um, number one, Makeup by Mario. One thing that nobody mentions are his lip colors, these glosses, the Pro Volume Lip Gloss. This is the shade Rose Nude, and it's absolutely dazzling. I'm gonna put it on so you can see. The reflective nature of it, it's really good on top of like lip liners and stuff. It has this micro pinky shimmer, and it really adds a lot to like other lip colors. It's not maybe as impressive on top of bare lips, but it's gorgeous. Also, just in general, the 
Revlon Ultra HD Vinyl Lip Polishes. These are so good. Full colored glosses. This one called Birthday Suit. I feel like it would definitely work with a lot of different looks, um, but very, very shiny, very full color. They're just a beautiful texture. I love those. And then something I don't know that I've hardly mentioned here, but these Ilia Lip Balms, these balmy tints in the shades Lady and Heartbeats. They're really, really nice lip balms, and I just love the colors. Basically, I got a little bit warmer red and cooler red, a little bit deeper, a little more berry in that one. Um, and they're so, so pretty on the lips, and they're pretty kind of like blotted too. If you want that soft, really casual looking red, I'm gonna use Lady. So this was the more cool red. They feel great. So that's pretty. You can see some of the shine coming from it. But I also think there's just a beauty to these if you blot them just a little bit. The way they wear is so pretty. That casual easy red, I just love it. It finished the entire look, did it not? Um, so then I'm looking at my face and I'm saying, is there anything else I would want to do? I think I might take a little bit of this shade from my Smashbox Cali Contour and just hit this zone a little bit. Okay, the blurring and the brightening is all happening. I'm pretty happy with the blush. The amount that I've got going on, the eye, the lip. Yeah, everything's working. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I love rediscovered videos so much, and sometimes there will be a thing that, you know, I use occasionally, but in videos I haven't talked about it a whole lot, and when I do a shot, my stash, it comes out. But a lot of these things, like I had really completely forgotten about, you know? And that's what made it so satisfying to uh, pull them out in this video. And the radiance on the skin for a powder foundation look, so nice. So thank you guys for your time today. I hope you enjoyed the look and I will see you again very soon. I love you, bye.